Hi, welcome to the Utuna Zalendo podcast. My, my name is Mwalimu Mutemu Wakiyama, the host, founder of the Mzalendo Halisi Foundation. Mzalendo Halisi Foundation highlights and amplifies ordinary Kenyans doing extraordinary things. In this episode, we're having a conversation with one of the preeminent journalists and show hosts on the, in this country, the host of Spice FM Situation Room, Eric Latif. Karibuni sana. Hi Eric. Hey. Baria. Salama kabisa. Asante sana for honoring the Utuna Uzalendo podcast uh-huh. or podcasts. Asante uh, sana for honoring me with an invitation as well. <laughs> uh, have you ever done uh, an interview before? Have I ever been interviewed? Interview like of course, uh, for a no, job, yes. Podcast but, uh, oh not no. not job interview of course. <laughs> on camera. For this thing podcast podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, but you know, not in a while. Or somewhere where you tell your story, yeah, nah, you know. Yes, but not not in a while. I've mm. done some public speaking, mm. but uh, recorded ones, mm. hardly. I ask the questions. You ask the questions. Uh, you are the uh, agent <laughs> provocator. <laughs> <laughs> I ask the questions. <laughs> yes, so the now this is a very awkward. I'm on the, the hot seat now. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the hot seat yeah. of the Utuna Zalendo podcast. Mm. Um, so, uh, just as a formality, please introduce yourself. Uh, tell us a, a bit about you. Um, I'm Eric Latif. Mm. I'm a journalist by practice. Mm. I work with the Standard Media Group mm. at Spice FM mm. and KTN. Mm. I've been in the media space for a number of years, more than half of my life. Wow. And, and How old are you? This is what I do. Uh, I'm 46 now. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've been... I've been in this space for about 27 years. That's wow. Clearly, you can see that's yeah. more than half yeah. of my life. <laughs> a, um, where are you from? Where were you born? Where did you go to school? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was born in Nairobi. Mm. And then uh, my... Pandigania, Nairobi. Pumwani. Pumwani Hospital. Yes, that's the only uh, one. I also went in those, I was, I was also born in Pumwani. <laughs> in hospital. those days, you're either born in Pumwani or you're born in a, one of the private ones. Mm-hmm. So I was born in Pumwani mm-hmm. at Pumwani Paternity Hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, at that point, my folks were working in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. And then we moved to Kajiado mm-hmm. just when I was about a year old. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in Oloitoktok ah. in Kajiado County. Do you speak Maasai? A little bit. Yeah. I actually sit back and I regret and feel like uh, I had so much time yeah. and I didn't learn the languages as, as mm. well as I should have. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You grew went up to, in oh, talk, yeah, grew went up there, to school there. Went to school there. Went to primary school. Went to mm. nursery school. Mm. And to primary. Mm. So I went to then school was called kind- kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't kindergarten. It's, <laughs> pri- it's nursery. Yeah. You go to nursery school. Mm. Then you do your hand like this. Mm. You go to standard one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did my hand days. like this. But I, I was linked in because my mother was a primary school teacher, uh, so I never had you, to touch You my never head. had to do it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you just got into Standard 1 Street. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, mm. I did nursery mm. up to Standard 8 in the mm. same school. Mm-hmm. It's Kim, called Kimana Primary School mm-hmm. in a place called Kimana. It's in now, Oloi Tok Tok. In Oloi Tok Tok. Mm. It's just about uh, eight kilometers from Oloi Tok Tok town mm. before you get to Oloi Tok Tok from mm. Nairobi. And then after that, I. I went to high school mm. in uh, Kiambu County, mm. the then larger Kiambu district mm. at Mango High School. Mm. So I did my four years there. Yeah, you went to the same school as Moeke Okebaki. That's the one. Uh, there are many other people. And George let's, Saitoti. Let's, let's just use Moeke yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he became president. So <laughs> You know? Yeah. Uh, and George Saitoti became a vice president. Yeah. And several other people. Mm. Yeah, but mm. so I was there for four years. Mm. Uh, of course, from one to form four, never got suspended, yeah. <laughs> never <laughs> went on strike or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and then finished, and I was to go to university then, and, but I already had a passion for media. So I really, 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 really wanted to join the media space. Mm. And actually this thing, I look back and I think by about 10 years old, I was mm. sure that this is what I wanted to do. Mm. I hadn't broken my voice or anything, mm. so God had not even given me the the advantage the, the you don't do with it huh? <laughs> but i really really wanted to do this uh, so mm-hmm. after high school 
I spent that one year mm. before you get the admission to university mm. looking around where is it that they actually train mm. people who work in the media. Mm. The universities then the public universities mm. were not doing anything. Yeah, else. there was no, no course in journalism. The only course mm. that was there was a postgraduate diploma mm. at the University of Nairobi, mm. postgraduate diploma in journalism. Mm. So there was no communication mm. or any information related course. Mm. And the only one that was coming close was uh, information sciences. In Moy University. In Moy University, mm. which is what now I got admitted to Moy University for ah, information okay. sciences. Ah. And but I was like, say information science, mm. was, how will it land me here? Mm. So I took that one year mm. to walk around the streets of Nairobi mm. and find out mm. these people that I see on TV, the guys that are here on radio, mm. how did they get here? Mm. I walked to KBC at stand mm. at the gate, mm. look at the gate and say, one day, <laughs> one day, I, I'm going to be here. I will be here. Yeah. And, you know, you can imagine at that mm. point, I think I was about 17 and a half years old, but mm. I'd mm. not even turned 18 yet. Mm. I was just walking there and thinking, I want mm. to do this. So we were pretty sure I knew what you wanted to do from a long, long time ago. Yeah. What, what had inspired you to imagine that you could be a journalist? A number of mm. things mm. are like narrowing it down and crediting one person, mm. Fred Obachi Machoka. Ah. But then he's one of those people that I used to listen to mm. um, on radio. Mm. So I used to listen to radio a lot. Mm. And then, you know, Kiswahili service and English service of KBC, those are the mm. only ones. Mm. And BBC later on, but mm. uh, KBC. So I'd, I'd really enjoy listening to, to those ones. Mm. Kina Amina Faki, Elizabeth mm. Obege, mm. Alisali Manga. Mm. And Fred Obachi, Uncle Fred mm. Obachi, yeah. Machoka. Yeah. You used to uh, imitate his voice? I used to love, I just used to love, <laughs> yeah. uh, he, you know, listening to his show. And his hype. And yeah. then there was the news guys, mm. uh, the ones who used to read the news, mm. Daniel Njogunagate before he died, mm. and, and uh, the others. Now he ni tarifa habari. Konza ni mutasari wake, msumaji. Ngula muaviro. Oh, you know, you know, else would be... Right. That time, uh, those were the celebrities. Yeah. Mm. All the English guys, mm. Kina Agao Patrobas. Mm. A gang of robbers. Yes, mm. you know. And, and so the connection with Fred Obachi mm. is because Fred Obachi, before he go, got into media, mm. was in the security space. Mm. Okay. Mm. And my mom was also working in that same space and they knew each other. Mm. So every time uh, she would be into the radio. Police? Yes, my mom was Your mom was a police. Oh, well, that's yes. why you were in post she was posted to Yeah. Uh Louis Tokto. Yes. Okay. So every time she you know she'd tune in and she'd mm. say, you know, I know this guy. Mm. And I'd be like, You know him? Mm. What? Yeah. And and on his segment, he used mm. to have the show on Sundays mm. called Kuaju Kua Tops Na yeah. Sanyo. Sanyo. Yeah? Sanyo Iko Ju Ju Sanyo Iko Tops Tops. So the, a segment on that show used to talk to guys who understand Morse code. And it used to be, signal, it's for the signalers. Yeah, signalers, yeah. Signalers. I never knew he was a cop. Yeah. yeah. Guy was a cop. Guy knew these things. So yeah. he'd yeah. do that small quiz mm. where he's sending a message on Morse code. Mm. And it says, if you understand this, just write in mm. to us and, you know, you can win a Sanyo radio. Mm. So my mom would write in and she had won one or two yeah, Sanyo nice. radios <laughs> and, and because they knew mm. one another so mm. she would listen and he'd, he'd mm. mention her out on radio mm. uh, so that really jazzed me and mm. i felt i want to do mm. i want to do that yeah. so up to date mm. whenever i meet with uncle fred mm. i call him uncle fred yeah. he's, a, he's, a, he's a perennial yeah. you know, he's, you you're the reason yeah, yeah. Yeah, the reason I'm and doing he's so this. And he's still at it. Ah, and yeah. he's still good at it. Mm, he's still good at it. Man in his 70s. Mm. And he has the energy of a 25-year-old. Wow. Yeah, I, I love his energy. Very inspirational. I think that's a very good person to be inspired by. Oh, yes. He's yeah. very inspirational. Mm. And he has stayed the cause, mm. you know. Mm. You know what you expect mm. from him. Mm. He doesn't deliver in half measures. Mm. He When he starts his show, mm. you will not feel, oh, Leo Fred Akonahoma. Mm. Leo Fred and Amud, mm. he starts the show, mm. it's energy to the end. That sounds like someone I know. 
Ayel Zagay on Spice FM called Eric Latif. Start the show I, and energy I, to the end. I, 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 I really miss <laughs> his show, you know. Very interesting that your mom was a, was a, was a police officer. I don't know whether, how, how does it feel to be the, the child of a police officer? You know, I don't think it's any different. Considering me. how police officers are regarded by our society. Not much of a difference, really. Mm. Um, mm. It's just mom. It's just mom. It's just mom. Yeah. Yeah. It's just mom. And your dad? What, what is My dad passed away when yeah. I was about a year old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, he, he was in business. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And um, you talked about uh, wanting to be uh, to be a journalist, but I read somewhere that you did to a communication engineering. Oh. That's, that's a whole journey of yeah. telling you standing outside. So KBC. after the one year of stand, standing, standing outside, outside KBC, KBC. no, yeah. just a couple of weeks. Yeah. One day I met with a guy called um, Arab Mayo, mm. right? Remember him? He uh, was also a KBC mm. news anchor. Mm. And outside the gate of, uh, mm. of KBC, I met him and I saw, mm. I've seen this guy on TV, mm. so I stopped him. Excuse me. Mm. Um, my name is Eric. I'm really interested in joining the media. Mm. And I just wanted to find out how do I get here? Mm. So the guy tells me, um, do you know a place called KMC? Mm. I told him, no, what's mm. that? It's Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. Mm. It's in South Sea. Mm. You take a matatu number 12, mm. tell them to drop you at uh, KMC. Mm. That's where it is. That's mm. where you study to become a journalist, mm. a producer, mm. a camera person, a sound engineer, mm. The media people mm -hmm. are trained there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I walked away, went all the way looking now for Gill House, mm -hmm. found Patato number 12, mm -hmm. entered number so you've 12. So you've come all the way from where talk talk to hang around? Now I'm living now here with oh. uh, my auntie. Ah, okay. So I'm with my relatives. So I just live in the morning and mm -hmm. like, let me just go and see mm -hmm. what this thing, how mm -hmm. this city mm -hmm. people operate mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. And so on that day, when, when, Arab Mayo told me I went and got into a matatu and went to KMC. Mm. So I got into KMC mm. and I'm told uh, it's in the afternoon. Maybe mm. you come back tomorrow because mm. the principal is not in. Because I want I've gone in there and I said I want to see the principal. Mm. So the principal is not in. So come back tomorrow. Mm. Didn't give up. Following day I went back mm. to KMC. Number twelve, Shuka, entered. I want to see the principal. Mm. I was told, ah, the principal is not in. What is it about? <laughs> I want to join mm. this college. Mm. No, no, no. Go and talk to the head mm. of department there. Mm. He's the head of production department. Mm. Uh, a gentleman called David Kamau. Mm. He is the late. Mm. So I went and uh, found his secretary. I want to see Mr. Kamau. Mm. See, I've seen the name on the entrance. <laughs> Sat down. And she, she told me, just sit. He is with someone. Mm. He'll see you. He'll see mm. you. I tell him, it's, just tell him it's Eric and I want to join. That's a very confident 17 year old. Ah, yeah, I yeah. was determined. There was, <laughs> there was no turning back. Was, the only gear was yeah. this has to work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I get in and I see Mr. Kamau and I tell him, look, sir, I just cleared fourth form. Mm. I just picked my results mm. uh, two weeks ago. Mm. I've passed to go to university, but mm. I just wanted to see can I also do I also qualify to mm. get into this uh, mm. college? Mm. What do you want to do? Mm. I want to, to broadcast it. Mm. Okay. So this year we're only doing two admissions. Mm. One for journalism, another one for engineering. Mm. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> young man, mm. you're doing engineering. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because you had good... <laughs> That's it. You're you had what, an A? Yeah. You're doing engineering. Uh, so... No, you had an A. Huh? You had gotten a straight A. <laughs> no, I didn't get a straight A. <laughs> but nah. Eh? The younger, a bit, of, a bit of my marks. Eh? I, didn't get, <laughs> I didn't get the straight A. Eh? Uh, so he he tells me we're going to have some interviews. Mm. Um, watch out for Kenya Times mm. when we'll announce the interviews. Mm. But it's going to be probably around May. Mm. Then we will do the interviews in June. Mm. And then we will pick people. Which district are you from? Kajiado. Ah, actually, we don't get many applicants from Kajiado, so mm. you may stand a chance. Mm. As like the time Nairobi. interviews used to be done in the in the district headquarters yeah. or something. Yeah. Mm. And so he told me, you, if you are here, come here and mm. do your interview here. Mm. But you just fill out that you're 
Mm. You just do your application, actually. Mm. It's not even interviews. It's mm. just do your application, mm. but indicate your district mm. as Kajero. Mm. And so I just left. And now mm. I knew there's nothing between now and May. I think mm. this is around March. Mm. There's nothing to do mm. apart from wait for Kenya Times May. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what date. <laughs> it's just going to be in May. Yeah. So in the meantime, yeah. I also walked to Nyayo House. Mm. And I'm just finding out. So I hear this TV called KTN. Mm. They're usually based at Nyaya House. Mm. Go to Nyaya House. Nyaya House was, it's, it's in the mid 90s. Mm. So Nyaya House mm. is known as Nyaya House. Right? The torture place. Yes. Mm. And I walk into Nyaya House and of course there are AP guards down there mm. and everybody. And I'm like, I'm going to KTN. Mm. Like, So there's mm. immigration there and all mm. the other offices. Um, press the lift, go to Nyaya House, mm. go to KTN. Uh, the 20s, the 20s, I think it used to be on the 22nd floor, but the lift was not going to 22nd. Mm. So you go to 23rd and come mm. down. You come down. Yeah. Mm. Did the whole thing. Walk to the reception and there's a receptionist outside and then there's, you know, security barrier to enter. Mm -hmm. So I sit there and I find there are many people waiting and I ask myself, so, okay, so what's my story here? Because I have to come up with a story to jump this queue. Mm. I have no story. Mm. Uh -huh. Um, um, I jump back because yeah. I don't know. So mm -hmm. who am I coming to see? I have mm -hmm. no idea. Mm -hmm. I can't say I've come to see Jimmy Garth. Right? Mm -hmm. What if he's not there? Yeah. Uh, who <laughs> else do I know? What, Jiroge Mwaura. I can't mm -hmm. say I've come to see Jiroge mm -hmm. Mwaura or Kathleen Kasavuli yeah. or Lydia Manyasi. Mm -hmm. Then if they come, what do I say? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to cook my story. Mm -hmm. Then I see a crew leaving. Mm -hmm. They've walked out. Mm -hmm. They are now going to the lifts. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the people pe People was uh, it was Emmanuel Mugera. Mm. He's now with BBC. He mm. was the boss of BBC. And mm. and when he walked, Solomon Mugera, not mm. Emmanuel, Solomon mm. Mugera. Mm. And then there was a camera person behind mm. him, the guy carrying a heavy camera. Mm. Um, so I stopped the camera guy. Mm. Excuse me, sir. Mm. My name is Eric. Mm. I just cleared high school. Mm. I really want to do media mm. i've been told i can go to kmc but that will be in september mm. so in between now i just wanted to see if i can see around ah okay you do this because eh? mm. i'm running mm. tell them to call for you sydney kuntai he's the mm. editor-in-chief mm. sydney who mm. sydney kuntai mm. okay i've never heard that name. Wow. he's the editor-in-chief so mm. now i have a name mm. so i sit back now <laughs> next i go i want to see sydney kuntai mm. who eric from mango high school mm. Okay, wait. <laughs> Eric! Bzz, yeah. Enter. Where am I going? Come, mm. I show you. Mm. So I was taken to this man's office. Mm. Enter, guys, I'm assuming he's mm. there with papers. He mm. has many things he's doing. Yes, mm. yes, young man. Mm. So I introduced myself and mm. I said, this is what I am. This is mm. what I do. I, uh, uh, I've just cleared high school. I'm really interested in joining the mm. media. I just wanted to get a feel mm. of what you people do here uh, so that I can know what particular course to go and apply mm. for in college. Mm. It's like, uh, so where are you from? I'm from Kajiado. Mm. Where in Kajiado? I'm from Loi Tok Tok. Okay. So what are you, how are you? I'm living here with my auntie. Okay. Mm. okay. Um, you come and see me. He gave me a couple of days. Mm. Uh, I think it was a Wednesday. This was a Monday. He told me, come see me on Wednesday or Thursday mm. at 11. Come and see me on Wednesday mm. at 11. Mm. I was like, okay, so. These are the guys who are off, you know, mobile phones. You have to come. Have to come to call me. Mm. You know. So this Wednesday, of course, it's supposed to be 11. I'm there at 10. 11, I'm taken in. And the guy just, ah, Kijana, Eric, you said, come. So holds my hand, opens this door. We enter into a huge hall with people. And then I immediately notice guys that I've seen on TV. I'm like, oh my goodness. Then he takes me to a desk. This Solomon Mugera guy is the one who's, Solomon, this young man wants to do media and he just wants to get a feel of what you do. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can give him a couple of days. Let him, young man, so just learn from them. And he walks out. Wow. So I've been left there. I have no, so <laughs> just learn from them. Am mm -hmm. I here for an hour? Am I here for a day? Can I come back tomorrow? I don't know. So I just mm -hmm. sit down. Mm -hmm. Solomon Mugera is very I good. remember those days we didn't really have internship the way it is today. yeah there was no internship. there was, was not like, like that. defined rules about how to the internship. only internship you'd get is if you've come from college 
and you have the letter from your principal or your head of department saying this so-and-so requires a three months internship attached to the college. And so it goes through the formal process. Now, this is completely informal, completely mm. random. You haven't even been to college. I, nothing. <laughs> right. yeah. So I, I, I start, mm. stayed there in the afternoon. Mm. Solomon mm. introduced me to others. I'm mm. just seeing the other big shots there. It's Kathleen Openda. Wow. Mm. Mm. Jorog Moore comes in the evening. That's, I saw, okay, that's Jimmy Garth who just crossed. <laughs> I'm like, wow, mm. these are the guys. Mm. And uh, evening came and I asked Solomon, can I come back tomorrow? Mm. What did the boss tell you? Mm. He didn't tell me, you come. Mm. So that ended up being three months. Wow. <laughs> and what were you doing there? <laughs> Tea or? Everything. Mm. So eventually mm. Solomon hooked me up with a guy called Benjamin Macau. Benjamin was the court reporter for KTN. Macau. He wants to know things. Mm. So Macau takes me to court. You know, now in court you have to wear mm, a tie. Mm. So do you have a tie, young man? No, but I can ask my cousin or mm. they can lend me a tie. Because <laughs> <laughs> the only tie I have has a badge. Yeah. For high <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah. I, I got that. And, and I got that experience of mm. working under the mm. tutelage of mm. these guys, mm. Benjamin, mm. Solomon himself. Others in the business desk, I call Michael Otieno, and others who um, I'll just go there and sit and I'll do a story. And the people at the news desk then, the news editor, the uh, guy called Katuan Zile mm. and, and uh, Kathleen Openda. Mm. So one time Katua tells me, Young man, mm. there's a, a fax has come in. Mm. Today. Write a story out of this. Mm. Do you know how to do an intro? Mm. I'm like, Ani? <laughs> I have no idea. How do yeah. you? Mm. Ah, yeah. So me, someone show him how to do an intro, how to mm. be processing these things. Mm. So I did a story. Mm. And it went on air. Did they give it to your bell and no, they see yeah. it's TV. It so was they, just read, so yeah, it's TV, so you don't really get the byline. But the fact that your your news item has been read must have been on inspiring. TV. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's my yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's yeah. that's the push mm. for it. it may came my apply you really had a drive i was so determined mm. there was no turning back mm. there was this is the only way forward mm. and it has to work and you know that for me explains a lot of uh, about you what, what i why I admire about you your professionalism is that you were mentored by the the guys who are um, you know who are the gurus then yeah you know i yeah. think that time ktn being the first private tv station I think you should pick the best guys in in broadcast media at that time and put them in Nyao House. Mm. And those are the guys who, who cooked you as it is. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. And I always, you know, I, I work with some of them even today. Mm. And every time I'm with them, every time I'm with someone, I, say, I tell them, these guys, mm. these guys are the reason. They they are what I have with me. Because mm. they, they injected it at that point when I was raw. And one of the big things that I keep, talking about is the fact that i mean there were big stars all right or even if they were not big stars the people who were working and this is a young boy who has long and kept hair he basically just looks disheveled mm -hmm. but they gave him time you know wherever i walked there's a lady called jacinta kiragori who's mm -hmm. in technical mm -hmm. and she was in technical even then mm -hmm. even now she's in technical at mm -hmm. ktn mm -hmm. And I'd walk into the studio and say, hi guys, so what do you guys do here? Mm. And the, the, come, 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 come. So this is it. You see this monitor? So this one is what we're watching. Mm. Then when I press here, this goes on air. You know, mm. they take time mm. to explain mm. without having the airs. To them, it was nothing. Yeah. But I keep telling them, you do not know. Mm. To you, it was just, you know, you, you just, yeah, just, you know, meeting a young guy. Yeah, just meeting a young guy and telling mm. him, yeah, this yeah. is it. Mm. But to me, that day, it mm. meant a lot. Mm. And I keep saying, mm. I want to do the same today. Mm. Every young person that I meet and they mm. tell me, oh, you know, mm. Eric, I listen to you every day. I'm like, here, she can go. You want to take a photo? Take mm. a photo. Mm. Make them feel that it's not beyond them. That's what that's important. the purpose of this uh, this podcast, uh, Utu Nauzalendo. It's mm -hmm. about um, my my thing is about mentoring. 
the next generation because personally I was not mentored but once I encountered mentoring I learned how powerful it is in terms of um, you know helping young people mm. figure out what they want to do with their lives mm. and not make the same mistakes others have made or or make fewer mistakes of course you still make mistakes or accept when you make a mistake yeah. just know mm. that others mm. before you mm. have also made mistakes yeah. and yet they survived they survived you know no. um and, and that, that's wow um I, I, i'm seeing a picture of you very confident aggressive determined uh, to get what you want i had fire in the belly then yeah, is yeah. that fire now i don't know <laughs> but then i i think you still have it because that's why, that's why you're on that hot seat uh-huh. because uh, i think uh, there's something about you um and i've watched i mean i'm 15 now so i've watched a lot of um, a lot of kenyan media mm. uh, not just kenyan media now arguably right now you're the best show host and i can i can venture that Oh thank um, you. Uh, yeah. And in terms of uh, not just good in terms of being professional mm. uh but also thorough uh, in terms of your research both on guests and topics. And now when you tell me oh, you went to Mangu now it makes sense uh, <laughs> because when do you sleep? I mean you have a show almost every morning and I, I know you're almost. a good producer uh, It's every but, week but morning. You, I think you're very prepared every time you have like and you normally have like three three guests in yeah, the morning yeah and you have a thorough command of that topic i have had you quote statistics and uh, uh, beyond i think what your producer presents you with um when do you uh, when do you sleep when do you research when do you when do you study all these things <laughs> it's a question that Are you actually a comes along. it's yeah. um, what i actually look back mm. and and see is those many years of working mm-hmm. in the media space and particularly in the newsroom mm-hmm. and at the news desk mm-hmm. opens you up to that and exposes you to that mm-hmm. so what and 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 even before uh, spice fm even at capital fm mm-hmm. what would happen is every time there's a news item and it comes so say a reporter has gone out and come back and said uh housing minister kulundu mm-hmm. has talked about this and the other mm-hmm. so i'm editing it that means i'm consuming the information mm-hmm. raw as it is mm-hmm. and then i'm editing and saying okay so this is not important bit because we want our news to be short and all mm-hmm. so next time somebody else comes and says mm-hmm. uh another minister has said this or like mm-hmm. it's already been but said because yeah, Kulun- I'll, i'll remember that yeah. mm-hmm. you know because i'm actually at the stage of processing mm. the news as it comes in mm. so that has forced me to be a consumer mm. a first level consumer mm. of news and information mm. which means it just comes and stays yeah yeah and because the job requires that i am fact checking mm. as an editor mm. then also it has ingrained mm. me the fact that i've got to remember mm. have i ever seen mm this information before mm. have i ever seen this mm. kind of information before and mm. if i have mm. where mm. if i so it's immediate i've mm. got to, you come and say something today mm. and i'll be like i've heard this somewhere mm. i can quickly mm. refer and mm. reference and check mm. is it true is it not true i've mm. heard about this kind of conversation before mm. and so with time mm. it just keeps building so up to the the knowledge right neurons in your in your the ability to retain uh, 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 have a similar experience having worked in media but mm. in the publishing uh is to to work with Oakland Media mm. and I said there's a designer then production when I went into production it used to be like the last bit so there edi- there's a editorial but before you go to color separations and print it would come to me yeah and I I kind of became a revised editor I could edit editors mm. it has been and it got to a point where i could look at a page and if there are errors they just jump jump out of the page i, I didn't need to read the entire they pop out they just pop out yeah. you know, so I, i can kind of read that it's the same mm. it's the same so every time now when we have a conversation four hours of conversations it's just adding on to that information base so what has been said before will keep popping out if you say something that does not sound like it aligns with what the brain knows mm. the brain comes and says hey wait mm. i've got a conflicting mm. entry here mm. Mm. <laughs> where do i place this in mm. which box because mm. this doesn't fit into the box that i already and have and you're able to like immediately just shuffle your brain and pick and like this where 
for go to that file and retrieve the information yeah. while you're interviewing somebody while well, this is going going on and yeah. you're still talking yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing and and have, have you always worked for the standard okay you you did a stint at capture fm of course but mm. It seems like most of your life you've been with the standard media group, Katie and Spice. Actually, a number of years, but yeah. not many. Mm. The, the, the longest I've worked is for Capital FM, mm. 13 mm. years. Mm. Um, That's, that was my, I think, my first encounter. First encounter, yeah. interaction. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I worked at Capital for 13 years, mm. but in between... Mm. I was also doing KTN, mm -hmm. so I did KTN News from 2007 mm -hmm. as a news anchor until 20, well, 2007 for about a you, year. You actually had big shoes to fill. Jiroga Maura and... Actually, we yeah. did, um, so the orientation then mm -hmm. was done by Jiroga Maura. Mm -hmm. uh, no, actually, let me credit it mm -hmm. a bit more. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I got a call from Katu and Zile. I mm -hmm. mentioned Katu and Zile. Mm -hmm. So in 1995, Katu and Zile had, you know, helped me, could not remember this young man. Mm -hmm. And then in 2007, Katu and Zile calls me, Eric, mm -hmm. this is Nzile. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, already, I'm in the media. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, Nzile, mm -hmm. boa, boa. come see me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want you to, do you wear suits? Yeah, boss. <laughs> no. Yeah. Get a suit, come and do a screen test. Mm. It's just for formality's sake. Mm. Turns out that Joroge Moura mm. actually is on where said, we are looking for a new anchor. Mm. There's this guy. Mm. Right? Wow. I listened to him on Capital. Mm. I let him come. Mm. And so I went and did a formality screen test and the following week I was already on air mm. reading the news. Yes, and at that point, I think the first the first bulletin that I did on, on KTN, I was co-anchoring with, I think the first one I did was with Beatrice Marshall. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Jorogo was, was with Catherine Kasavoli most of the time. Yeah. So Jorogo mm. was doing with Kasav, mm. and then I came in and I was paired with Beatrice Marshall. Mm. Um, well, the other guys, was Michael still there? Michael, yeah. And, and yeah, but, Mm -hmm. So I was there working with these guys, but mm -hmm. this time I have become a guiji, that kind yeah. of boy of, <laughs> you know, 13 yeah, years old. Yeah, boy. It's no longer that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a guy who's been in the newsroom, I've, mm -hmm. I've read the news, so mm -hmm. sitting in front of the camera now mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. reading the auto queue is, mm -hmm. you know, fish to water, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And, and at what point, uh, I mean, part of my research I, I came across is the workshop that you are Eric, you were born Eric Njeru. When, when did you change That's to Google. Eric Latin? Did Google also tell you I'm a billionaire? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 56-year-old <laughs> billionaire, billionaire yeah. called Eric Njeru. <laughs> no. When, when did you, were you ever Eric Njeru? Never. It just, it just, uh, <laughs> Never. My just family name is Kingori. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but my name is Eric Latif Kingori. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, so Njeru does not exist. Mm. Yeah. So you just dropped the Kingori yeah. for, for, for... I just used those two. Mm. That it, in fact, this used to happen a lot. In, in high school, mm. I was very active mm. in public speaking mm. and in doing poems and such. Mm. And I'd participate up to a national level. Mm. So I used to use the name Eric Kingori. Mm. So every time I'm going there and I'm doing in big letters, assessors, ladies and gentlemen, mm. and, 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 my name is Eric Kingori. So mm. they, if we did the right Eric mm. Mori, mm. When they, <laughs> <laughs> that's all like, uh, uh, this thing is confusing people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I have another name that they can use. Mm. Let me use this other name. Mm. Yeah. Eric Latif. Yeah. Did you ever end up in theater? Were you part of the James Falkland guys at uh, Phoenix? You know, never. Uh, never. Yeah. Because a lot of the media guys in the 90s uh, came from Phoenix. Yeah. Never. Actually. Yeah. Kina yeah. Charles Carey are the ones who are media. And Eric Davi, and Eric Davi, and the others, and his brother. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I never, mm. never, I never acted. I think Karen took also. You were with her at Capital. Yeah. Um, she also went to. Did she? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I think that crew, that crowd, says Mutungi, mm. a lot of them went did theatre. So I'm surprised with the. I know some did. Yeah. Um, I know others are just theatre lovers, mm. so they would attend and. Um, how did you end up back in, uh, I mean, back on radio at Spice, um, Spice FM? Was it your idea? And how did you put together the crew? Because you, you have a very unique crew. Mm. Um, 
<laughs> you city muga ndu oko um, all credit goes to a guy called Tom Japani mm. he's yeah, the no, Tom he has gm for radio yeah. xbbc mm. so uh, in 2016 mm. i was still working at capital then i mm. decided i think i want to take a break mm. and uh, i wanted to do something i want to start my own agency a communications mm. company mm. i can still work with media mm. just part, part time but not full time mm. engaged so i left capital mm. in 2016 mm. and i started my company called zaza digital mm. um, which is doing a lot of communication and all and i also wanted to do a bit of mentorship mm. so i got guys from multimedia university and daystar mm. and they came and you know work with them mm. and then one time i think around 2018 I get a call from Tom Japani. Mm. Eric, he has a deep voice. Mm. Like, hey, Sam Tom, I'm go, fitty, fitty, how you doing? Good. Mm. So he's like, listen, um, we're working on a new concept mm. for a radio station. Mm. And this station will be, you know, a mature station mm. playing mature kind of music, mm. music of the 80s and the 90s mm. and targeting a mature audience. Mm. But also we want to have a talk show. Mm on radio, mm. uh, on breakfast. Mm. And I was thinking of you as the anchor host for that. Mm. Is this something that you'd be interested in? Mm. Like, that sounds interesting. Mm. Tell me more about it. Mm. Like, that's just it. Mm. So far, that's the rough idea on mm. the mm. table. Mm. Uh, the other thing would be, so you'd be f four hosts. Mm. So I'll look for the others. Mm. Um, but the, I, the people I have in mind right now, and do mm. okay, you don't you don't do, I knew and do. Mm. Mm. And, and uh, Jerry Thorne, I knew Jerry. And he's saying, I'm looking for a fourth person. I was like, all right, so what do you want? Mm. I just wanted to sound you out. Mm. Here, if you, something you'd be interested, mm. I locked that down. Mm. And then I continue with the rest. Mm. I told him, you, when you're ready, let me know. Mm. Told me cheers. Just give me space, mm. I will call you. Mm. I gave him space. Mm. And that space was long. Mm. It was about, I think, four, six months. Yeah. When he called back, mm. are you still on that story? Mm. I'm like, yeah, mm. you have told you. Mm. You let me know when you're ready. Mm. He's like, I think now I'm about mm. ready. Mm. So he's the one who conceptualized him and uh, mm. others in the team, mm. conceptualized the station mm. and the show, mm. the situation room. And, you know, the fact that they wanted it to be a, a talk radio. Mm. What was interesting to me is because mm. I'd done some bit of talk radio mm. on Capital. Mm. On Sundays, they used to do a show called Talk 360. Mm. It was a talk mm. uh, radio. Mm. And we had tried to bring it to breakfast mm. with Chris Kirubi. Mm. He said, let's have it on breakfast. Mm. But everybody else was feeling Capital and talk in the morning. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit too much. Yeah. How do we yeah. make money with mm. this just talking mm. no 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 no. Mm. this is prime time mm. it's time for making money and playing music and mm. guys are going to work you don't mm. want to bore them with mm. just talk mm. so kirubi told me he's okay you let's just do it in the afternoon on mm. sundays mm. we will win these guys over mm. you know with time um so it was a natural for me to feel ah mm. okay. these are these these where i belong yeah, yeah we mm. can do it again let's mm. let's give it another try mm. and see how far it goes mm. Secondly, I have enjoyed doing fasts. Mm. It's a fast, it's a new, it's a novel concept. Yeah. Nobody else has done this. Mm. I'm willing to try it. Mm. And that just goes into what I'd done even before. I, mm. was, I was willing to try Metro FM. I was mm. among the first interns who were mm. in Metro ah, FM when okay. it launched. Yeah. Um, then Family Media. Even when, when, when it launched as, as, cap, as Capital FM. When it launched as Capital FM. So oh, the story oh, trying, of... Trying to kill Capital <laughs> FM. What's the story? Man? The story of this one. <laughs> so there's a bit that I had not told you about. Mm. When I'm walking up and down and just trying to figure out what to do. Mm. Um, there was the Minister for Information in 1994, 95. Mm. I think up to 96. Mm. His name was called Johnson Macau. Mm. His name was Johnson Macau. Mm. It was the late Johnson Macau. Mm. So Johnson Macau had a son mm. at Mangu mm. who was a classmate of mine called mm. Mulila Macau. Mm. And Johnson at that point was the mm. chair of the board mm. of Mangu High School. Mm. So in my pilka pilka of walking this town and knocking at all doors, mm. one time I went into Jogo House because mm. I knew this is where the Minister for Information is. Mm. 
walked up to the seventh floor. Mm. I found people at the reception. Mm. Many people here wanting to see Waziri. Mm. I also joined the queue to see Waziri. <laughs> and the PA is like, uh, so who do you want to see? Mm. 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 Okay. Mangu High School. Eh? So he's the chair of the board. So mm. I knew this Mangu mm. would, mm. would, would cut some weight. Cut some weight. Oh. So uh, at some point, the other guys were told, Waziri is going to He has a meeting in the afternoon. Ule kijana Mangu, kuja. I was put into an office yeah. as huge as this mm. gallery. Mm. You walk into the mm. very end. And the guys Those government four. offices with oh, sound with, uh, red and sound sound and, that. and you start with three a whole... A sitting area here yeah, before yeah. you get into that desk at the end. Mm. So he beckons me, comes sit down, mm. and I tell him the whole story again. You mm. know, yeah, I was in school with mm. your son, lie, yeah, yeah, here's my result, I passed, but me, mm. I don't want to go to university. Mm. I want to go to KMC. But in the meantime, mm. I want something I can do mm. to keep myself busy, mm. to wait for college. Mm. So he calls KBC and tells, go and see mm. the MD at KBC. Mm. Um, so I ended up going to see the MD at KBC. I was taken to a lady who was uh, the program manager, mm -hmm. TV producer at KBC. She took my contact. She was uh, Mrs. Nyamai. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Nyamai, I just told her, okay, so this is me. Mm -hmm. She told me, just keep calling me. Mm -hmm. So one time I'm in KMC and I call her, you know, Mrs. Nyamai, you're married. Uh, things, you know, I'm in KMC. Mm -hmm. Ah, listen. We are doing some voice tests. Mm. Can you come and do a voice test? Mm. Then, 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 then call a man called King Asia. Mm. And he will tell you, in fact, wait, call King Asia. King Asia comes to the phone. Mm. Then, 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 Eric, come, I don't know, a certain day, mm. come and see me. Mm. So I went and then and I was told, now we are doing voice tests. Mm. I tell me your voice has broken now. Not, not that my like yeah. voice has broken. Yeah. Come to to Kasarani, they mm. were doing at this KBC studio in Kasarani. Mm. Come to Kasarani, that's where the voice tests are happening. Mm. Come see King Asia. So I go, I see King Asia, he takes me to the voice test. Mm. I didn't know what they were doing this for. Mm. Kumbe, they are looking for presenters for mm. the first public FM station. Mm. So I went through a series of interviews mm. after voice test, interview, 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 and throughout panel interview. Mm. And they were like, so we are looking for people to get Mm. onto the KBC, mm. but they'll have to be permanently employed. Mm. Are you going to drop out of college? I was like, no, I, I don't think I can drop yeah. out. Mm. I think I have to finish. Mm. Okay. But this is your dream. Kind of but you know, this is it now. Yeah. Right? If I drop out of college, mm. the paperwork, mm. the papers will mean something when mm. it comes to employment. Yeah. Now, it's, I was like, no, let me just finish. Mm. Uh, then I talked to Mrs. Nyamai later. I told her, I really would like... Mm to just intern in this thing that you're mm. starting. Mm. So she introduced me to Elizabeth Omolo, who mm. was now the head mm. of the new station, mm. Metro FM, but mm. for the, it was capital for a couple of weeks. She of the children's show. Elizabeth Omolo. Yeah. Shangazi. Mm. Right? Shangazi, yeah. Of uh, the children's show. I'm yeah. happy, yeah. Yeah. how you yeah. know. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, so I was, an, I was an intern mm. at Capital Metro mm. when it started. Mm. And throughout when I was in college, mm. now I even was, would be an intern who was mm. going to read the news, uh, mm. not to read the news, but to host. Mm. So I was hosting an evening show, a late mm. night show mm. on Metro FM mm. called The Love Zone. Mm. And I'm just coming from college. I remember so The every, Love Zone. Yeah. Everybody in KMC yeah. is just sending me <laughs> dedications. I'm going I'm, I'm hosting wait, The wait, Love wait. Zone. The, the, just, just a step back. Um, that time, Capture had gotten a license. Capital, Capital FM started. had had a license, yes. but had not been allowed to start broadcasting. And then the government starts its own Capital FM. They were delaying. Mm. I think it was a whole. It's it's just the government thinking. Yeah. How can a new person come into the market mm. and start an FM station, mm. and we don't have we don't have an one. FM station? So and we delay. are the government. Mm. So let's just just the games here. Mm. They've been gotten the, the license, mm. but let's just the games here mm. as we get our act together. So they were doing this thing in a hurry. Mm. And then they go into the market and mm. they want to call themselves Capital FM. Mm. So that they confuse mm. these other guys mm. to delay them further. Mm. Linda Holt Nani. Linda Holt calls, calls, mm. calls. I remember that. Yeah. Mm. And she's like, this is, mm. Capital is my brand. What mm. do you mean? Mm. No way. So these guys mm. had now look for something else that looks like Capital. Mm. 
What is the other word for capital? Metro. metro. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so they ended up with Metro yeah. and Linda Holt kept mm. her capital. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was there, mm. I did that mm. at the beginning of, of, of Metro. Mm. And then I went to Family Media. Mm. That time they were just conceptualizing mm. a new, so I'd heard it, you know, in the industry, there's a guy who wants to start mm. a new TV station that mm. wants to be, he's going to be a Christian station. I'm like, mm. okay. Mm. Where are they based? Mm. Somewhere, somewhere in, in Kileleshwa, mm. exactly where. Mm. I got up Kifika, Kenya High. Mm. I went Kafika, Kenya High, knocked at a gate. I was mm. told this is it. Mm. They're called Media Production Limited. Mm. And I said, I want to see Get Leo. Uh, Leo single. Yeah. Mm. So I saw Leo and I told mm. Leo, okay, mm. listen, I work at metro but i'm not permanently employed i'm an mm. artist at metro mm. and i'd like to come and work for you i hear you're starting some crazy thing mm. a christian radio station mm. and tv mm. yeah 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 mm. so leave me your voice test i so i left him a tdk mm. chrome <laughs> the ones you used to yeah. turn with a bio c90, c90. c90. You know, i have recorded my <laughs> audio demo uh, i left it to him yeah. and uh, then he told me come see me after a couple of days mm. now it's so that we are calling each other mm. <laughs> you're given a date of course because uh, no mobile phones <laughs> no mobile remember. phones i think even pages i don't started at that time. there were pages, there were pages the guys who had pages <laughs> hey, boss. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so mm. I went and I got the job. Mm. So I was among the guys who now started mm. um, with with family. Family FM. Yeah, mm. at the NSSF building. Mm. And my engineering background now came in handy here because mm. now I understand the equipment. So we're actually doing the installation. So we did the yeah. entire installation mm. together. Mm. And then when family FM went mm. on air, mm. I'm the one who put up the fader mm. and said, this is one of five point two family yeah. FM. Nice music, you can believe it. Yeah. I was the first one. That, it was my <laughs> voice that first went. <laughs> so you've been a pioneer. In I, I that's I say. It, anything that sounds new, yeah. I jump to it. Mm. But at least then, when I was, mm. you know, those days when I had fire in the belly, I don't mm. know where it is now. No, I think you still have <laughs> because uh, I, I think, I, as I said earlier, I think your show is, you know, cut above the rest. The rest. I mean, um, I don't think there's competition. I know there's. One of your competitor stations has a similar show, but uh, no, you can't. Mm. You know, in terms of um, social political issues, uh, political commentary, mm. current issues, current affairs, uh, depth of, um, I mean, variety of guests and issues. I think you're still setting standards. So that must be that pioneer spirit. I hope so. And we yeah. have to keep, we have to keep raising that bar. You have to keep. It's not easy. Mm. It's not easy. So let, let me ask you, like, um, there's, there's a slant to your show, I mean, uh, with with um, with City and uh, Do, that tends towards social justice. Um, what, what, you know, is it you as a person? Is it a policy, uh, you know, within the station or standard media group? But I, I kind of feel it's, it has to be do with, with the three of you. Um, mm. And maybe, I don't know about Tom, I think even Tom, What's the background? Am I imagining things or is it that you care about these issues? You actually picked it well. Um, mm. The overriding mm. and overarching uh, objective of the station, mm. and this is, as Tom keeps reminding us, is mm. to comfort, comfort the afflicted mm. and afflict the comfortable. Mm. Right? Mm. So we've got to look at it from that angle. It mm. has got to be citizen led and citizen centric mm. as opposed to the other way around mm. where you're looking at the leaders mm. being this is a platform for the leaders to come and mm. just mm. talk mm. and postulate, banter yeah. and yeah. postulate. Mm. but it's about mm. making sure that those who seem comfortable mm. are afflicted and they see mm. the other side mm. that there are many people who are not comfortable mm. and so how do you raise those issues of the mm. people who are not comfortable how do we make sure that governance works for governance mm. and the way governance should work. Mm. How do we make sure that even the citizens' responsibility, mm. as contained even in the constitution, mm. people understand that they also have a responsibility. Mm. How do we all live in this society and then take our duties and responsibilities seriously? That's mm. basic, mm. basically it. Mm. And it so happens that fortunately mm. we believe in 
the same ethos, mm. right? The three mm. of us, mm. plus now the programs controller and, mm. and the general manager, mm. we have same kind of thread in our mm. individual fibers mm. that we think, yeah, 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 but mm. you, you've got to be accountable mm. to someone mm. for everything that you do. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 and the, other, the other interesting thing is that, um, you know, the standard media group is associated with the, with the uh, Moy family. And um, um, it's surprising that, uh, just as I was surprised that uh, the KTN, you know, those days when you could not criticize Moy, the station associated with his family business was actually the most critical of, 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 uh, of him, yeah. even his government. And yeah. you could say it contributed towards Kenyans actually turning against him. I mean, what's, what's that dynamic? Uh, uh, being able maybe to let what is it's a radio station or TV station do what it needs to do as a commercial, as a business, as a whatever, mm. and the personal things come second, or is it a streak within the Moi and Moi family? I don't know. I think, mm. actually, because that, that is something that keeps, you know, popping out all the time. Mm. When people are looking at something to throw a jibe at the standard group. Mm -hmm. They'll say, but this is a Moi family. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a Moi station, it's a mm -hmm. Moi media house. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that headline, of course. Mm -hmm. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, even in those days of the 90s, mm -hmm. when I had a short stint there as an intern, mm -hmm. at no point did I hear the editor saying, mm -hmm. uh, boss has called, mm -hmm. or so-and-so has called, mm -hmm. so I to change the story. Mm -hmm. That's the time when they were, they were covering the Sabasaba rallies. Mm. KTN was covering mm. the Sabasaba rallies. Yeah, KTN yeah. was covering mm. the demos. KTN mm. was giving uh, Kenneth Matiba mm. and the others. And Mwai Kibaki. And Mwai Kibaki. 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 All yeah. these guys mm. were actually getting coverage mm. in the news. James right? Orengo. When KBC would you know, start with their must, they must start with mm. Tukufu Tukufu Rice. Rice as the first item. Mm. KTN, that's not necessarily mm. the first item. Mm. And you could see that. Mm. And so you know that there is no editorial interference mm. to that great extent. Mm. There may be editorial mm. leaning, mm. which is human. Mm. You know, in some cases, you'll be like, okay, mm. so come on. Mm. This one you're hitting at me directly, mm. personal. Mm. But if it's work, it's mm. country, it's mm. no, mm. you actually don't get it to date. Mm. The things that, you know, I have never mm. heard Tom Japani mm. or also because I'm on KTN, mm. any of the editors on KTN mm. calling to say mm. that this story is dying because mm. orders from above. Mm. Yeah. Never. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually been, a, you know, a, a, I guess a great contributor towards the... So, uh, you know, uh, I mean, how, how KTN has survived that long. Yeah. Um, and the standard group, of course, it's the oldest media group in the country. Mm. So, uh, and, and it used to be seen as pro system way back when Nation Media Group came up and, uh, and, and, and started being critical of the Moi government, being, yeah. being the platform. KTN, I think, was, was able to stay above the fray and, and be able to be, you know, a critical, what I call for the state institution, mm. um, which I think is lacking in our media right now. Remaining objective. Of our media. You know, sometimes this word objective is subjective. Mm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a matter of, it's a yeah. matter of personal mm. opinion. Mm. You know, I mean, here you say something and I consider that objective mm. because one of the things is because I agree with what you're saying, mm. <laughs> right? And then other, in other cases, because I don't agree with what you're saying, mm. I think you're biased. Mm. But objectivity is just that. Mm. Are you laying bare and are you staying neutral mm. or as neutral as possible? Even mm. if you're leaning to one end, mm. you haven't really crossed, mm. but you're trying as much as possible to mm. present both sides mm. of any argument of any scenario. Mm. And if that is objectivity, mm. then you'll find if you stay within mm. that, mm. if you say, I'm going to give Mutemi mm. a platform to come and say, mm. and I'm also going to give Mutemi's complete nemesis mm. a similar platform mm. to come and say. Mm. So Mutemi, when he gets the platform, mm. he'll be praising me. Mm. When I give the same platform to the enemy, mm. like a you, Bana. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. where is journalism in this mm. country? This is very media. Mm. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, I haven't seen you host Itumbi. I don't know why. You, I have. Were you in class? Were you in school together? It's yeah, he came, came a couple of years later. He came out. Uh, yeah. And on Sarigo. Yeah. They, they joined a couple of years later. But um, yeah, we've hosted Dennis Itumbi. Oh, you, you have? In African. fact, mm. um, after that horrible ordeal that he had mm. uh, last year mm. in the hands of these thugs who mm. nobody ever knows who mm. they were. Mm. And when he came out of hospital and he recuperated and was able to walk a bit, mm. ours was the first interview that he gave. Yeah, okay. And we were asking, so what happened? Just mm. give us an account. Mm. What, what, what happened? Mm. Do you know who did this? Mm. And, and, and yeah, mm. since well, after the government took office, mm. we haven't hosted him. But also you can understand, mm. is he in government, is he not? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so is, he, some, is he a CES yeah, or not? We, yeah. Sometimes you just yeah. see somebody and you understand you don't, mm. he does not want to put himself on the spot mm. because mm. in what capacity am I speaking? Mm. The moment that Dennis is willing to speak mm. in an individual capacity mm. and distance himself from government, he'll come. Mm. Or if the position, whatever position is confirmed, mm. Then you can come there as, yes. as a conservative. Yeah. In, in, in what capacity are you speaking mm. today? Are you speaking as Dennis Itumbi, a mm. very good supporter of mm. the president? Mm. Or are you speaking as Dennis Itumbi, mm. a chini 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 yamaji mm. CS? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, you interviewed uh, the president. You, you led, um, you kind of co-hosted uh, the interview with the president uh, a few months ago. Mm. Um, and the president is uh, quite media savvy. He's able to take over interviews uh, and become the interviewer. Although you're the, and you, I think you handled it uh, quite well. How, how is all that experience? How do you prepare for that? Yeah. Um, it, though actually, you, let's look at them in two ways. Mm. There was that, the, the presidential debate mm. in June last year, mm. and then this interview mm. uh, in State House mm. in. May, I think. Mm. Um, so the, the presidential debate was meant to have two people, mm. right? Raila Ruto. Mm. Raila mm. does not come mm. for whatever reason. Mm. I still don't understand why mm. he wouldn't come. Mm. And, and Ruto says, I'm going to come. Mm. So you see, that one now turned from being a debate mm. to being an interview. Yeah, an interview yeah. And not just an interview. You are looking for a job mm. and you're asking the Kenyan people to give you this job. Mm. It's an accountability interview. Mm. What have you done with what you've been given so far mm. so that you can then earn the trust to be mm. entrusted with more, right? Mm. And there are many people from both sides. There are those who watch the presidential debate and they're like, you guys who are good, you stayed mm. the line. Mm. And then there are those who are like, oh, you people, Azimio people, you had been, <laughs> you had pangered this thing. Can you right? love so it doesn't yeah. come so that you yeah. can now, mm. you know, what, what does it matter with those questions you're asking? Mm. How much is enough? What's that? Mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. But... The going into that, mm. we Yvonne and I had mm. several conversations and preparation. Mm. And I must say that we did not sit in any meeting mm. with anybody to be told these are the questions you ask. Mm. The entire presidential debate team, mm. the researchers, the the editorial producers mm. are giving the guiding. Mm. These are the questions that we have asked people to tell us mm. what areas they'd like covered. Mm. So these are the questions, these are the areas that are coming out as strong areas. Mm. Then you have been selected because the team believe that mm. you also have something mm. between your ears. Mm. So you also are able to discern mm. what is important mm. in the country. Mm. So we sat with Yvonne a number of times and we just broke down Mm. There are very many areas. There's mm. security, there's mm. cost of living, there's economy, there's, mm. there's, there's education. There's, mm. uh, how do we manage one and a half mm. hours? Mm. And what are the questions that, and the questions that we pick? Mm. And those are our questions. Mm. No influence from even our editorial director for mm. the presidential debate, mm. Linus Kaikai and all. Mm. We actually just sat at the end and he told us, mm. are you guys, do you have your questions? Yes. Mm. What areas of focus do you have? Don't mm. give me the questions. What mm. focus mm. areas do you have? This and the other. Okay, uh, this one, please remember, there's been this matter, this issue, this mm. issue. Mm. Um, this has been said before, this has been mm. said. So mm. just remember that, mm. put it into context, new questions. So we're asking those questions in that context. Mm. And because it was timed, mm. even Ruto now knew, I mean, I've got to answer this question within mm. this period. Mm. Come to the interview mm. in his home turf, mm. In, and, and he knows 
this time I'm president, mm. okay? Mm. <laughs> I'm not actually asking mm. for a job. I've mm. invited you to come. Mm. We engage. But also, I've got to say about William Ruto, he really um, is media savvy, like you mm. said, mm. but he's also respectful. Mm. He and he knows how to maintain his cool. Mm. So even when you push him and you poke him, mm. he'll maintain his cool mm. and respond to mm. the areas. Mm. He'll want to obviously mm. uh, take over mm. and answer a question for long. Mm. So that he's in, the one that he's enjoying. Mm. It's normal. You know, we coach them actually. Uh, I've, I've worked with a few <laughs> politicians. We coach them how to turn any question into into a positive. I mean, the, let's say you have three things you want to say. Mm. So how, whatever question you asked, you spin it into... How do you come back to your key communication to, message? Yeah, yeah. How do you bridge back into your key communication mm. message? Mm. It's, the, it's the interview training skills mm. that you learn. Yeah. We also know the same. Mm. So I can tell when you're bridging mm. and you're heading back to an area. So mm. I've got to <laughs> tag back at the leash and tell yeah. you, no, 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 mm. this is it. Mm. This is it. Mm. It was an interesting one, mm. um, this presidential interview. Mm. Because at the point the president wanted to communicate with the country mm. about the tax measures that he was mm. proposing mm. Mm. and housing levy mm. at that time it was a housing contribution housing fund mm. that you know he was proposing and he wanted a, a platform in which he could mm. engage and get a moment to speak to the country mm. this is the thinking that mm. i have mm. we also knew that this is what he wants to mm. do and you know the concerns of the people and mm. we have to Know, how do we bring in mm. the questions that the people have to the table? At the time, he was facing a lot of backlash. Mm. Yeah, across That's the, the time when yeah. everybody was saying this mm. housing thing, this housing mm. thing. Mm. I know he wanted to come and explain mm. this housing. Mm. You know, it is money that will still benefit you in future. Mm. I feel that they were still working on it. They still mm. hadn't concretized they hadn't what they were doing. They hadn't figured it out. Mm. And they were using even this feedback from the public to know mm. how do we structure this mm. thing. Mm. And and much as you know, we were also pushing him back mm. on those questions. Mm. He was responding, mm. and one of the ones that I took out that was key was Lofty Matambo of NTV mm. brought in the question of uh, Shakahola, mm. and that's we had discussed earlier and said mm. somebody must got, must take responsibility mm. for what has happened. Hundreds of people cannot die in the presence of a government mm. that is supposed to ultimately, mm. no, first and foremost, mm. ensure security mm. of its citizens. Mm. So Lofty Matambo put that question to him and told him, Mr. President, mm. this happened. Mm. For the government of the Republic of Kenya, you are the president. Mm. Do you apologize? Mm. And he did not even flinch. Mm. He said, yes. Mm. As president, I take responsibility mm. and I want to apologize mm. to the people of Kenya. Mm. And that to me was, I was like, Okay, okay, mm. this is this is something. Mm. Mm. It's um, something new. Yeah, mm. because he did not even decide to argue about oh you, mm. but you see, but I wasn't president, uh, he said so. first and foremost, mm. yes, I apologize mm. that this happened, mm. and we shall ensure that this doesn't happen again. Mm. Now the follow up on what does of course happen again. No one has to get responsibility. Know. Yes. We all know about yeah. that. Yeah, which is why now this second time as mm. as he's celebrating one year in office, mm. I hope we get an opportunity to ask him mm. so. Is Why? there another interview planned? Well, they should come. Mm. He mm. is open to having interviews. That's mm. what I picked mm. from him and his team. Mm. And definitely, I know, definitely, mm. a presidential interview is coming soon. Mm. Yeah, I, I've watched. Um, I've watched him take over uh, interviews, um, and, and you know, with, apart from maybe you and Hussein Mohammed, who's now his uh, uh, communications guy. Mm. I don't think there are very many Kenyan journalists who've been able to, 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 you know, to push back respectfully, of course, but mm. also push back and, uh, and and have him have the conversation and say what needs to be said. I'm conflicted because I have such admiration for for your work, um, and it's good that you've told me your 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 you want you know to stand in the gap for the conflicted. Um, we are in a country where um, our, our political leadership does not seem to have answers to issues that we have. Mm. They do say a lot of things. Mm. Um, we talk about Africa having, you know, a youth bulge, Kenya, a lot of young people who don't have jobs. 
uh, we have technology that is now taking over mm. uh, most of the jobs that will be promised by politicians. Mm. Um, how do you see your role um, as someone who's standing in, in the gap or comforting the afflicted in terms of shaping future discourse so that as a country we start talking about issues that matter rather than the competition between Azmiu and Kenya Kwanzaa mm. or whatever formation will come. They keep shifting their names every other election cycle. Like, what do we need to do? What What is your role as a journalist, as a show host, uh, as someone, uh, you know, that 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 very uh, onerous responsibility you've given yourselves um, to stand in in the gap to, com to comfort the, the afflicted. How so do you see your role? What, what do you think we should do? It's interesting that you asked that. Um, mm. I've been having internal conversations and also mm. conversations with uh, close friends and mentors and now, mm. and saying, I, as Eric Latif, I'm at a position right now where I have a platform. I have a platform that could influence what happens in this country today and into the future. Yes. How do I use that platform? And I keep remembering the words of the late Chris Kirubi. Mm. Every time he'd walk into the newsroom and he just, you know, he was very always happy, but he'd come and say, what you have here is a bullet. Mm. What you have here is a bullet. If you put that bullet in the barrel of the gun, make sure that you're ready to shoot. Mm -hmm. Make sure. And and he'd come there and, you know, keep asking us about uh, the, these stories that you're running. So this story, uh, what kind of output do you expect from this story? Are you are you telling us this story so that we know? Mm -hmm. Are you telling us this story because it sounds very good and sensational so mm -hmm. that, you know, it just gets you the numbers? Mm -hmm. Do you know what you'll have opened up with this story, mm. always think about that. Mm. And he never came and told us, kill that story, but he mm. was always reminding us, mm. guys, remember. Mm. So I think about that all the time. Mm. Right now with the platform that we have, um, having a premiere show, not only in the morning, but just mm. a show that has conversations in the country, mm. it's a big responsibility. Mm. And every time I keep saying, I hope that this platform that I've been bestowed the honor of mm. carrying mm. right now, mm. I'll use it to the, for the greater good mm. of the country. And the greater good here is sensitizing and creating awakening mm. of all of us as citizens. Mm. Because I, I, I look back, it's, it's, we're asking questions to our leaders, mm. but we have to know what questions to ask mm. as citizens. Mm. So my bigger burden is how do we bring a greater enlightenment of the citizens of Kenya mm. so that then they can take up this mm. responsibility seriously. Mm. The responsibility of thinking about the leader that we are electing. Mm. The responsibility of being clear on what you expect from this leader. Mm. So that then when you're holding them accountable, you're holding them accountable against something that you made very clear from mm. the very beginning. Mm. In all the corporate spaces and even not even in corporate many places when you employ somebody you make it clear to them what you expect mm. them mm. to do deliverables the deliverables the mm. kpis are clear mm. there is going to be some continuous assessment mm. and there will be a point where you sit back and you say all right so these were your kpis how so have you performed? sometimes we joke that we we have kpis for house help yeah. but we now we have none for not for our leadership. leadership when people are coming and they're walking you know to our homes and they're knocking mm. and they're saying i'd like you to elect me as mca as governor as, mm. as mp whatever mm. they pick out what we say are our pain points mm. they'll come and say to the spitali apa because they know from what they've gathered mm. the people here really want a hospital mm. okay the people here want a market mm. the pain point for this group of people mm. is market mm. pain point for these ones is school a nearby school for their mm. children mm. so we are clear mm. at that point mm. we are saying what we are saying mm. but then we don't elect them knowing that i've elected you because mm. you said you're going to deliver a hospital mm. otherwise we'd be electing all of them because all of them are coming <laughs> and saying i want to all I'll of them build are a hospital. promises yeah yeah mm. if we went further into how mm when mm. right mm. then we'd say we picked 
Mutemi mm -hmm. ahead of Eric mm -hmm. because Mutemi said he is not going to use our money. Mm -hmm. He is going to prudently use our money. Mm -hmm. He's going to build, build this hospital in six months. Mm -hmm. And he went even ahead to say, when I build the hospital, I will make sure there is medicine. There's medicine and, uh, and trained and, stuff. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. trained staff are going to come. Mm -hmm. So Mutemi knew what is required, not mm. just the hospital. And there'll be Eric no only came pharmacies and said, opposite the hospital. Yes. So clearly mm. Mutemi understands the issue. Mm. And that's why we elected Mutemi. Mm. And so Mutemi would also know we picked you because mm. you talked about staff, mm. you talked about the medical equipment mm. and the supplies, mm. and you talked about this hospital being here in two years' time. Mm. Those are your KPIs. Mm. So it's very clear. Mm. Now we need citizens mm. to actually have that. Mm. And I'm, I'm really hoping that this platform plus the others mm. that um, I have mm. will be on that, on mm. sensitization. Mm. We've started a new campaign mm. just informally mm. on who is going to be the next generation of leaders. The independence generation of leaders exited with Moi Kibaki in 2013. All those were theirs. Kibaki was the last one holding it, left the scene. The 80s and 90s leaders are the ones who are leading us now, right? In 2032, they'll definitely be exiting the scene. Are we prepared for that? Mm. And that's what now we've started that conversation of. Mm. Are we prepared for that? Mm. If our current senior leaders mm. are the shining example to the young leaders, mm. are they actually giving them the good example the, the, of what the right leadership? mentorship? Yeah. The right mentorship. Mm. Are they? If the mentorship is mm. To turn a Kobarabara. Mm. <laughs> and that's a conversation we'll mm. always be having. Mm. If the right mentorship is come and make promises, make mm. promises, go mm. back. If the right mentorship is mm. our person is in office, so mm. we are happy, we are okay. Or say whatever needs to be said, just get say, elected and then after that. And, and abandon and mm. move. Mm. Then we shall get a worse crop of leaders in 2032. Mm. Because they'll have seen mm. you can make promises mm. and you don't deliver mm. and nothing happens to mm. you. Yeah, no These guys are going to elect you anyway. Mm. Mm. So can you imagine if in 2032 you have then somebody, at least these ones of today, mm. they have a bit of a guilt mm. because they saw it mm. earlier. They have mm. a bit of a guilt. You know? mm. They'll they, give they you have a fight. Have a memory from the time when people used to take when responsibility. When things were being done. Yeah. They grew up, mm. they grew up as young men and women mm. in days when things were working. Mm. So they know, they remember mm. when Nairobi had a working mm. system. Mm. When Kenya had, it was still backward, it was, but it had a working system. When mm. schools were public schools, mm. they remember that. Mm. When hospitals were public hospitals, mm. the younger leaders that we have today, mm. if you look at the 30-year-olds who are in parliament, mm. they don't have memory of it. When public mm. school was the only thing. Mm. No. When, 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 when garbage was, used to be collected. When garbage was, they, mm. they don't know that. Mm. Now you can imagine if they take over in 2032, mm. knowing there's no accountability for mm. this they will just get into government and they'll be eating. Mm. And, and I think about, that has already started. It's upon us mm. to start creating the KPIs mm. for the leaders we want to elevate mm. to steer this country forward in 2032. Mm. That's, a, that's a huge, huge responsibility. A big one. Um, because, um, I mean, we talk about, and, 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 and I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up, um, the, the constitution gives us uh, rights, freedoms, but very few people talk about responsibility of a citizen. Mm. Um, and um, when you are an, an active citizen, most of the time, you'll face a lot of pushback. You're I think, alone. Um, you're alone. Uh, you're, nani ya mekutuma, nani na kulipa, mm. who's paying you for this? Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And I think with a platform like yours, um, uh, taking that responsibility, it's a good push towards, and that's that's the essentially the reason why I invited you. It's a good push towards um, mainstreaming that. Mm. Um, apart from you, maybe um, Yvonne again. You mentioned her. Uh, it's um, citizen with yep. the with the with the gang or, or the news gang. Yeah. Um, but I feel I feel we need more. I don't know what what can be done to have much more of that. I, I admire the way the newspapers have not uh, crawled into a hole um, mm. in terms of uh, holding Kenya Kwanza to account. Because there was there was a fear that they would they would be intimidated into into you know the Baba and Mama tactics of just praising the president. Yeah. Uh, how do we mainstream? How do we make this the norm? Uh, even having conversations that are unpalatable. Because I think one one of the other reason I like about your show and you talked talked about it is um, 
that you will bring both sides, which is the, um, es the essence of the original tenets of journalism was both sides of the story. Nowadays, we have a, a lot of one side from whatever, even, of course, even fake news. Mm. How do we uh, mainstream this and make it, how do we get Kenyans to have conversations even when they disagree? Um, you know, like we might disagree, never agree, but we can have a conversation. Yeah. Mm. One thing that Jeff Koenanga keeps saying mm. is that let's talk. Mm. Because the moment we stop talking, mm. we will start fighting. Mm. So every time, whatever kind of conversation you're having, let's just talk. Mm. And I think that's a very good thing that we have in this country. Mm. It may have come, you know, by accident. Mm. It may have come, you know, push, push, push. But then mm. it just became normal. Mm. But in this country, it doesn't matter what. Mm. People will talk. Mm. And Mwai Kibaki helped mm. by just sitting back and you guys. Yeah, you the only like thing I do not want you to say is I have a second wife. But yeah. everything else. <laughs> that was the only topic that the only that one was, he came out and said, uh -uh. Yeah. here, no. Yeah. Here, yeah. I only have one wife. Yeah. One dear wife, mm. Lucy. Mm. The rest, you talk mm. whatever you want. Mm. And that was good. Mm. Uhuru, much as he was you know, a pushback guy, mm. he would also just come out and also mm. comment and blast. And say, Gazette is a yeah, nyama. But he would let it mm. happen. Mm. You drive him out of social media, like, mm. yeah, your social media, nilifunga. but he's still on social media mm. because he wants to see and yeah. see the memes. Because yeah. yeah. at one point he'll forget and say, Nimeona is a meme. <laughs> <laughs> so he's still enjoying it. Mm. And allowing that space mm. has gotten now, it's entrenched. Mm. Where we are right now, mm. it's very difficult to mm. take that away from mm. this country. Mm. It's very difficult. Mm. It could happen in mm. term, you know, in big conflict, mm. war, and then mm. a guy comes and says, mm. we are not going back there. He uses that as a fear mm. mongering mechanism. Mm. But where we are right now, we are talking. Mm. It's a good thing. Mm. I think it's just going to open up. Mm. So we have a show like such as ours in the morning. Mm. We have all these ones that are on TV. Mm. We have TV shows at night. Mm. We have got radio. Then we've got now mm. such platforms mm. where it's not just a T, uh, mainstream media. Mm. Even mm. this digital space mm. has become open. Mm. So we have vodka such as this one. Mm. We have podcasts. Mm. We have people who are just telling their stories. Mm. And that is a big thing. Mm. I think it's gaining momentum mm. and it's going. Mm. This it's not good. Show, we can't put the, uh, the, the genie back in the bottle. Ah, this mm. thing is Imenda. 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 It's only now making mm. sure that mm. it's all for the greater good, mm. that, that these spaces will be dominated by people who mm. mean well, mm. and not these spaces being dominated by people mm. who don't even know what they're doing. Mm. Mm. If you had such a vodcast and the people that you are, you're just doing it for entertainment, mm. and the people that you're having mm. are just, you know, to come here and pour vitriol, mm. it'll go south. Mm. But you have people such as yourselves and mm. others who are active citizens mm. taking up these spaces mm. because you have been stifled and nyongwad mm. in other spaces. Mm. But then you find life here mm. and you continue. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank mm. you for that. And um, as, you, as you wrap up, because I know um, the time, we're almost through the time you had, you had indicated. Um, Eric La uh, Latif, uh, married, father, I can see a ring. Um, yeah. Tell us about your your family. Yeah, yeah if, you, so if you don't mind. I'm married mm. uh, to one wife. To one wife. <laughs> <laughs> I have one dear wife yeah. and one daughter. Okay. Um, How old is she? The daughter. She she's nineteen. Okay. She's now off to college. Ah, okay. And that's my family. Mm. And then the, beyond that, now the other family is your wife is, in the media? Or? No, she's not. Uh, uh. She's not. My wife is in business. Uh. Um, my daughter is in school. Okay. She's interested in uh, architecture and mm. design, mm. not even in media. Mm. Uh, many of her cousins and aunties were like, I thought you were going to be a media person. <laughs> and I'd be like, where did you even get that idea from? Mm. <laughs> this is, she is a completely different human being. She mm. has her own life mm. and her own line. So yeah, mm. that's it. And beyond that now, of course. Is she studying I, uh, architecture in Kenya or? Uh, no, abroad. No, she's going mm. abroad mm. to study interior architecture. Okay, that's actually what I did. That's <laughs> in, what you did in school. Yeah. Interior architecture. Yeah. So uh, we always find ourselves in yeah. very different uh, 
Yes, please. Yeah. Like there's a young people who did this for the set, build the set. Mm -hmm. I told them I could do that, but I'm going to stay away because I don't want to get into your hair. You, you do not want to. <laughs> you do your thing. Yeah. yeah it's, that's interesting. Um, how do you feel about the future? How your daughter uh, bequeathing, you know, this country? What is your message to the young people in this country? There's hope. <laughs> like I said, the gin is out of the bottle. Okay, and, and this country where it is, we only need to get the right combination mm. to propel it to move us faster. We are moving, mm. but we are moving at 45 kph. Mm. And yet we have a capacity to move at, well, let's not go beyond. I mean, uh, let's, our let's, streets have signs of 50 kilometers per hour. Yeah, mm. but we are on a highway. Mm. And the highway is 110. Mm. 110. We have the capacity to do 110, but mm. we are doing 45 mm. on a 110 highway. Mm. Right? So we just need to make sure that we get the right driver mm. who can move this car mm -hmm. at 110. Wow. Don't speed, mm -hmm. just move it at 110. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've done, actually, mm -hmm. just to share this as we conclude, is I have, since 2013, mm -hmm. I have gone to the ballot with my daughter mm -hmm. and to show her this is this is how you actually do this. This is how you vote, mm -hmm. then you queue, mm -hmm. then you see what I've done, mm -hmm. and then we enter into the booth, mm -hmm. and then I tell her, my candidate is so and so, mm. and this is what I'm thinking of. Mm. And I have deliberately, and I can say this, I don't fear mm. saying this, I've mm. deliberately made sure that I voked for the underdogs mm. and the odd ones out mm. in national leadership mm. at the presidential level. Mm. At county and MCA, I'm very mm. serious on that. Mm. MCA is the most important leader in, mm. my, in our, my opinion. So that one, I'm clear mm. on how I'm going to identify. Mm. But at national level, mm. since 2013, mm. I've always gone for the one who was the young candidate. Mm. The young candidate in 2013, mm. the young running mate called Ronnie Osumba. Mm. And for that was PK. That was Peter Kenneth and Ronnie. Mm. That was for me. I want this guy mm. and others like him mm. to feel that they actually have space. Mm. It was the first time we were seeing a presidential ballot with a 30 year old person. Mm. Mm. And it was a big thing yeah. and something to encourage. Mm -hmm. Same thing in 2017, mm -hmm. the young man called Mudiora. Mm -hmm. Mudiora Carriera. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that a guy could dare to dream mm -hmm. and somehow end up being picked by a guy who has come from America and mm -hmm. wants to be president of the country, but mm -hmm. they're on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And his performance at the deputy presidential debate mm -hmm. in 2017, I was like, mm -hmm. This is a guy. He's, to a, he's, he's a very knowledgeable guy. Very sharp, mm. very sharp guy. Very sharp guy. In this one, mm. Justina. Mm. And you look at Justina and the mm. thinking that Justina mm. Omai has mm. and the push that she has had, not just this, but previously she has mm. tried to run for MP. She mm. has tried to, she is involved in governance. Mm. And I tell Latifa that. Mm. I tell her, these guys, mm. I am mm. picking them because. Your daughter is called Latifa? Yes. Uh -huh. Mm. I'm picking them because mm. I want them to feel validated, even if it, had, it will be the only vote that they mm. get, mm. that they feel validated. They won the ballot mm. and somebody voted for them. We, we, we picked, as uh, Mapinduzi, Mapinduzi, we picked Kigame, but he never made it to the ballot. Yes. Um, and and the, this show is called Utuna Uzalendo mm. uh, podcast. It's about uh, humanity. And one of the, uh, the platform Kigame was running on was actually Utu. Mm. So something that I'm very passionate about dignifying ourselves because um, I think we've been very indignified by our, our politics, our mm. leadership, mm. our governance. Uh, it has not centered the Kenyan or the person. Uh, it has more centered um, uh, highways and infrastructure and that kind of thing. Important things. But I think if you have highways and they, and they are not Kenyans, then what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Mm. What are you doing? So thank you so much for uh, giving us time. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Uh, I'm honored actually to be the, maybe the first person ever to interview uh, mm. in, in this kind of format. Yeah. Um, and um, we look forward to hosting you again because then I'm sure we will find issues to talk about. There are many issues to discuss. Yes, me, thank you very much. Uh, thank you as well for yeah. inviting me and mm. having this conversation. Mm. And I want to encourage you as well. I mean, you do a lot, you know, as an active citizen, you you stand in that gap. People may not see it, but history will never forget. Um, even if the mainstream history does not 
propel your name, mm. history itself will not forget. Thank you. So be encouraged, man. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. Asante sana. Asante.